When I went through this in an earlier version of this video, I really kind of, I think, freaked a few people out with this kind of information. So I'm going to spend some time here really zeroing in on this. This right here, you have to understand that data coming out of the data bot that uh, Integramat has provided around COVID-19 data, it's just straight numbers, percentages, and everything else. And to make them look acceptable to users in a regular way on their phones, what we decided to do was just to simply format them using the tools that Integramat provides, which I love. This particular one was a county name, so we didn't have to change that. So as you see these things in gray like this, these are functions inside of Integramat that you can implement. They look like they take up a bunch of room, but they're just calling a function inside of Integramat to take care of some work for you. So in this case, we are, we're getting the last update, and that last update is a date uh, that's provided. You always mouse over this to see what sort, of date, what sort of data format that you're getting. In essence, we are formatting the date just to say uh, 4.9, so MD. So with the format date function, we're just wrapping the format date, and then we're wrapping it with the parentheses. We're putting the value that's coming in from the bot. We're doing the separator that they ask for, and we're just giving it month date. There's all sorts of super informative help inside of Integramat that helps you do that. Then on the next line, it's confirmed cases. The confirmed cases, unfortunately, in many areas in the United States are in the thousands. As a result, instead of just giving you a number um, that you could just see without any comma or uh, decimal separator, we invoked this format number function in which we the first thing is a number, the next thing is the decimal points that you want to display. The next is a decimal separator and then the thousand separator. So in this particular function, this format number for the number of confirmed, we want zero decimal places. We're telling them that in our presentation, we have this decimal is how we, uh, that the decimal point is how we uh, provide decimals. and what do they call it? That our decimal separator is this, and that our thousand separator is this. All right? So the growth number is slightly different because that is a percentage. It's a decimal point, like 0.044 or 0.033 or something like that. I didn't want to um, lose that 0.33 or if it was 0.3334. I didn't want to lose any of that. So what I did is I first multiplied that percent that decimal point times 100 to get a real number, right? Then I wrapped it in the format number, and I said I wanted two decimal places so I can get 4.33. My decimal separator was this, and my comma separator was that, and I popped a percentage sign at the end to make it look presentable. The deaths, um, it was another format function where the number of decimal places is zero, the decimal separator is that, and the comma separator is that. This was a little bit more complicated because there were, um, it, for some counties, there were new deaths identified. In some counties, thankfully, there weren't. But instead of having new deaths always pop up, even if there weren't, if it was a zero, we ran an if function that said the number of new deaths, if the number of new deaths equals zero, then we just send an empty data string. So there's nothing, empty text. But if that's not the case, we're gonna open a parentheses so it looks like we're formatting it. We're gonna put in the number of deaths and we're gonna say new, and then we're gonna close the parentheses for formatting purposes, and then we're gonna close it for the, for the um, if function to finish it. So there's a lot more information about that. You can message me afterwards if you want to talk about that. And that's why we did it. We also did that because of our calculation, as I mentioned earlier. Um, in essence, Messenger only allows 2,000 symbols. I'm assuming that's the same as characters. Somebody can correct me. That if there was um, zero new deaths, there was no need to continue. If there were zero new deaths, there was no need to include that line to get more states in our output. And so that's why we did it. And that's what this detail is all about. Let's see if there's another one in here. The filter is pretty straightforward. The bundle order positions less than or equal to zero. That's just 
let's see, I could just call it filter. Did we? Um, now I could just say up to 30. So, except for this change, this entire scenario is available for you to download, okay? So that's what this is right here, and it just has this sleep function here if, as it goes all the way through. The neat thing about Integromat that I enjoy is to go back and see what happened. I can kind of play back what happened. So let's see what happened here. Um, go back here. Somebody has been testing my Florida, and that would be me because I was messing with it. But, so this is how you can follow to see what happened. Um, so in this case, the request came in. It was not a county request. You see it didn't have county, but it did have no county, so that meant it was a state. I was able to look it up inside the Google Sheet and I found out it was Texas, right? And then I was go, able to go in here to see if the total number of bundles was one. And here I was able to put in Texas and it gave me lots of bundle output. So I could look at this, but if I went down here you can see it went all the way down. It's only going to show me 100, but uh, the module originally returned 180, right? So it shows me the first one, but you can see the data that comes through. Um, the province name, the state name is Texas. The county name is that. But this is the data that came through, um, the last update. So I'm using the last update in our data. The number of confirmed all the way through, right? Let me show you one of the growth rates here. So here's the growth rate of confirmed, it's this data. So this is what I churned into a percentage. And that's how that particular one works. So we know that data came through. So we know we had 180 were filtered, right? And none of them were unassigned. Let's see if we found any that were unassigned. That meant that they hadn't applied them yet. Right? So there were none unassigned in Texas. And then what that 180 did is it went through and it started allocating. This was an error that I found because I was using the wrong filter and I fixed that. So that's reflected in the scenario that you would download. But you can see the first 30, these are groups of 30 came, came in, but they didn't have, um, and then this, this group came in. And this, what I like to do is I like to go back and, and try it live. So let's go try it live. Okay, so I'm gonna look for my state, right? So we're going in saying my state. So I've been again this time. Would you like to search for a state? So we're going to check my state. And it's going to take me through to here. We're going to say Texas. Okay. And it's going to now run off and give me some data inside of Texas. And it's just giving me some data, 1 through 30. All right, 31 through 60. 61 through 90. 91 through 120. getting dizzy, 121 to 150, 150 to 180, and that's it. So now let's go troubleshoot it, or excuse me, do a, the playback inside of Integromat. So we did this, it went through, took 30 seconds to roll through, ran through 22 operations, See what happened. Okay, that's attached. So in this particular function, I went through and there was no county. All right? And I found 
Texas with one bundle. Texas is applied here. Let's see what it says. Texas is applied here with these percentages. And you can see for the output here, if we go back up to the top, and I so apologize for getting everybody dizzy for doing this. Four point six eight. That was our formatting. Um, we had our numbers like that, and the deaths were seven, and that's how many were new. And that was that. And then we went through in each of our flows 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. And then when these are empty, this did not proceed, so that we did not get data. So it stopped at 180, just like we thought. And it waited five seconds and it sent us the data. And just in case you're wondering what kind of data it provides, 150 to 180. We can just go all the way to the bottom. Do not look. And so we can say with unequivocal, the well, last one was Zapata County. And that was that. So that matches up. And so that is how this functionality works. And I really wanted to make sure that you had this chance to go dig into exactly how Integromat works in a bot, providing you data from external sources. Um, it's not extraordinarily, it's not extraordinarily difficult. What it is, it takes some time, and I try to work with everyone that I talk to about this, and there's an incredible community, just like there is with uh, Minichat or any other sort of tool out there that really will help you get through a lot of it. So have a great one. I want you to really stay safe out there. And uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to walk through all this geekydom. All right, take care.